glasses from home. There we are. We love Welcome to tonight to What's New. We have some lovely guests. We have Jeff McCarthy. We have Winita Wyman. We have Annette Roth. And we have Donna Rausch. 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 And Rolf. <laughs> Rolf. <laughs> Here to join us this evening. And we hope Rolf. that you will all enjoy the evening. And this is Joel. This is Jean Henson. I'm Mary Ann And ours is absent tonight. So we'll get started. And who? You want uh, to go? Donna, I think, is okay. first. Okay, sounds good. So we'll have Donna wash the... Da. Roush? Roush. <laughs> you say Donna, I'll say Roush. Okay. <laughs> Let's put it this way. You introduce her. potato and potato. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes, Donna, please. Uh, tell us about Le... Le Revelion. <laughs> That's it? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I'm from the Felix Valley State Historic Site, and every year we have our special Christmas event. And it will be Sunday the 9th this year. And um, it's La Revelion, which means the reveal. And it's our, um, it's what the French would have had just before, after they went to Christmas Mass in the evening. So we'll have entertainment in the parlor. We'll have a dulcimer player. And we'll also have um, 13 different desserts that represent the 12 disciples and Jesus because this was a very um, religious, uh, symbolic um, mm -hmm. event for the French. We'll also have the table set with the kind of foods they would have eaten, and we'll have Bush de Noel, which is a Yule log cake that everyone will get to sample, and we'll have cookies and other things for folks. And the house will be completely decorated, and we'll be in period costumes. Okay, now, uh, I understand there's no charge for any there's of There's no so charge. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely free. Are you yeah. doing any um, showing the house or anything? We will show you that. The bottom floor only, it'll all be candle lit and we'll be telling you some of their religious symbolism with our greenery and we'll have the crush and the santons that the French would have used instead of a manger because the manger just is just the angel and the wise men and Mary and Joseph and the baby but with the French it's the whole village so it'll be all the village people as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh. What time does that start? Oh, it's going to be from 2 until 5. And what was till the six. And what was the day day? Sunday here? the 9th. Oh, great. This next weekend. Oh, that's good. Um, so there's going to be a lot going on. There's going to be a yeah, lot going got, on. Usually a we're weekend. a week out. I was so. thinking, has it always been on the Christmas walk weekend? No. But because because the, it, the way that this fell, we're the second weekend. And this, this is the, the first second. full weekend. So... That's how it all felt for us. We should yeah. have put that on our program. It would have been yeah. great, you know, because yeah. you would. But so. everyone's going to love it so much. Yeah. And what time does it start? It starts at two, and I said five, but it's two to six. Two six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, it's going to be fabulous. It, it really will. will. The ninth, and this will be where? At the Felix Valley House. At the Felix mm -hmm. Valley House. Okay. And if anybody wants to do any Christmas shopping, we will have our gift shop open. Ah, in the Shaw House. Great. Oh, okay. In the Shaw House. And for okay. those of uh, who are watching the TV show that are going to be at the Christmas Festival, do stop in because it is such a charming event. It's very um, historically accurate, and mm -hmm. I always find it quite the I've very had, much I've gone once, too, and I really, really did mm -hmm. enjoy it. It's nice. It is very nice. And also, on Annette's uh, events that are going on, we'll be providing French donuts on Saturday in our courtyard after oh, the parade. Yeah. It's so. early in the... Oh, oh, it's right after the oh, parade. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Oh, it seemed to me they we had We used to do it before, for but people were lining up for the parade, so now it's better they can come get it after. Okay. okay. So, oh, yeah. But I have it on the program at 10 o'clock. Yes. Well, when's the parade? Is it 10? 11. Or, 11. Oh, well, 10 o'clock? We'll still have <laughs> <laughs> we'll still Okay, have that's, yeah. there's I'll another. I'll do it whenever you want to. Yeah, have. you're the first guy. You're the first guy up there. Okay. <laughs> we'll still have donuts at 11. Man up. Okay. There's another we'll one of those in. words. Yeah. Croc signal. Croc signal. Okay. okay, and French donuts now, what's different? For okay, so in this area, old mines in particular, right. the, the French brought in a different, it's not like a beignet, it's not like well, going down to Louisiana and okay. New Orleans. It's, it's got a little bit of spice in it, and it's more cakey, and it's braided. So we oh. make them, we braid them, and then you deep fry them, and they have but a little powdered sugar. Them, not oh, no, we make them. them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we so. make them. Huh? So that's uh, Saturday, that's Saturday. Yeah. Exactly. before the parade. Okay. Before the parade, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. They'll be ready. They'll, They'll be, be ready. ready. <laughs> we have a hot coffee and 
What hmm. are they? Maybe I'll I should serve for, coffee. Cocoa. Okay. Wow. Um, I'll go for coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Either one is good. Uh, well, that sounds great, yeah, Donna. It does. So this is the first time you've had it on the same weekend as the Christmas We did it festival. one time before just to see how it would go yeah. over. And it, I'll, I'll be honest, it's a lot of work to get things ready for two yeah. different things. But um, I kind of liked it because more people came in and we were Probably able to talk about so. it more. Yes. So. And you're always welcome to be back on the program because mm -hmm. we'd love to have you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it just all fell kind of funny this year. So <laughs> if this works yeah. out again, it, we may end up doing it this way all the time. Just if you want it's funny, come to St. Jen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was a little confusing, the, the first falling on Saturday. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I know yes. when the festival was going mm -hmm. to yeah, be. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. it's it the little, first full weekend. It's, and and first I looked it up and because, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it, the a full weekend, you know, what a weekend is, according to the dictionary, is uh, the end of a work week or the end of a school week and the beginning of the next work or school week. Uh, one definition said it's usually celebrated, you know, they focus a lot on Saturday and Sunday. Only one that said that. Six definitions where it begins Friday <laughs> evening and ends Monday morning. So, <laughs> there were six definitions. Friday. So, I think that's, take that six. Well, I think the yeah. jour de is like that too, is it? It is the, really. The it second is. full weekend. So, yeah. yeah. We have to be careful. It's usually the way it is. Do you have anything else you'd like to just come and see us? Um, we always get excited when people walk in the door. So, yeah. you know, the more the merrier, and we love to tell the story. So. And, and it's our special event for us to give back to the community, so mm -hmm. we'd really mm -hmm. like for a lot of folks. It's to always beautiful. The stories are really very interesting. Mm -hmm. I know working in the archives as I do over at Bull Duke, mm -hmm. oh, some of the stories that come out of there, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're really good. Yeah, they're good. Well, I think that's the thing about St. Genevieve. We we're such have legitimate history here, and uh, uh, <coughs> it's it's really a I mean, I love history myself, and I love oh, the yes. stories to go with it. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice if and we can get that out there to the public. And you're actually, you know, uh, doing this, you know. It's our 36th yeah. year. 36th year. Now, wow. Jim started it. Jim Baker started yeah. it. Yes. I'm just, and he gets to come back every year and help because it's just yeah. part of who yeah. he is. But 36 years. It's Have you been incredible. there this? Oh, no, not for 36 years. <laughs> What's incredible is Jim Baker's 15. been a part of St. Genevieve yeah. for 36 for that, years. That's that amazing. Years, he really looks 37. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I better not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so I think Jim it's great. Back for Jim is here. Oh, he is, he is here. here. He's helping us get all the food ready. Oh my gosh. And he'll be at the event. Yes. In a walk costume. Since I've seen Jim. Yeah, <laughs> you'll have to go. I, well, I'm going to try to. But the weather holds. <clears throat> yeah. But don't get too tired. <laughs> That's the same day as our thing. Mm, everything is bad. Everything. everything. <laughs> That's yeah, like I'm hoping, you, you know, our art show is over at 4 o'clock, well, then we have to take it down. And I know, you used to, I'd love to go to the church. Um, what is it, 3 o'clock with my mother? Well, then mm -hmm. I joined the art guild, and so much for that. You know, mm -hmm. you're, when you're involved in one thing, it's hard to participate in another. But there's plenty to do for many other people. Oh, my gosh. There's lots to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which we'll find out in a little bit from Annette. But yes. Yeah. She can, she can pull it all together. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank yes, you thank you. Me. Thank you for pronouncing the words. You're welcome. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> so who wants to go? Well, next? I will go ahead and talk about the, uh, the Art Guild and our okay. annual a Christmas art show. I'm not even sure how many years they've been doing this. I know I joined the Guild in 99 and we've been doing an art show every year. In fact, uh, for many years we were probably one of the main attractions, attractions in town before other communities around started having you know, their own Christmas uh, you know, walk and, and we just have a lot of activities going on. But we're, we're still a good attraction, so. Um, this year, you never know where we're going to be, though. That's the problem. Uh, That's it. Since the Art Guild doesn't have a, quote, permanent home, we get to go wherever we can find a place, where we can rent a place. And uh, so this year, we're at the DeBerg Center. Mm -hmm. And 
that's real. That is nice. So the <coughs> bird center in itself is a you know a beautiful location. It's large. It's big. Uh, so we're going to have a lot more artwork this year than we probably have had in many, many years. Oh, I say many, many. We had a lot when we were at the Ketting Building. We had a lot when we were at Rosier's before it was all sold and converted. But um, so we will have a, a lot of artwork this year. And um, um, new this year, or not new, but what we're bringing back, Friday evening we're going to have kind of a sneak peek. So it, we will be open Friday evening the 7th from 4 until 8. We used to do that so local businesses yes. could come in, remember Mary? And so now since we have a nice big space and we've got, we're going to have a lot more artwork, we decided we would go ahead and open it that evening and maybe there'll be people uh, at the B&Bs that might have, that gives them a place to go then Friday nights. Mm -hmm. And also maybe some of the local business owners might want to stop by too. So that will be Friday from four until eight. Uh, we are then open on Saturday from 10 until uh, four, but we're going to have a meet the artist reception from four to six. I think I have that correct, is that, is that right, Annette? Uh -huh. And from four to six, uh, the artists will be there so you can meet the artists and talk to them. But also, we will be having music, and this year it is the Academy. The Academy Hill. The, the Academy Hill. They've been coming to our art show for quite a few years quite a few now. Years. Um, I know Rosie, and I don't know the others. Is it Sam, Sam and, and Rosie? Okay, but an, it's not bluegrass. It's uh, it's kind of bluegrass, bluegrass music. Grass, it uh -huh. is bluegrass music. It's great. So, it, and then we also have extra refreshments that evening. We'll have some wine. So I'll be there. So definitely come in <laughs> <laughs> um, on Friday, and then on uh, so that's fr uh, Saturday evening from four until six. So we're really going to be open from ten until six. Okay, that is on Saturday, and then Sunday we are open from ten until four. Okay, um, this year we have there are more members in the guild. We probably have fifty some odd members now. Many of them are active members, meaning they're actually um, um, working artists. Uh, we, we do have patrons, but we're getting more and more working artists who are beginning to want to show their work. And um, so I think we have 24 artists showing work this year at the DeBerg Center. Uh, the work varies again. We have a lot of two-dimensional work still, the fine art, which will be the hanging work. Uh, you know, oils, acrylics, watercolors. I do pastels, and there are, I think now, three other pastel artists. That's becoming a popular medium, I think it looks different. like. I guess that's it. So uh, we have that. Um, and there, there's a lady from um, Farmington. We have several from Farmington now. And she does something very different. Uh, it's, it's very super realistic and uses acrylics, but she also does something that's called Genesis. Uh, I really had never heard of that before, but it, it's a very detailed uh, art, and uh, her work is kind of Americana, I call it, that type of subject matter. So uh, some, different, some different types of things. Uh, we have some of the same artists that we've had in the past, but we have a lot of new ones this year. Um, we have also a gentleman from Farmington who's gonna have pottery. So that'll be nice to bring back some three-dimensional work. Uh, I thought we were going to have some leather working, but uh, he, I talked to him today, and he was not able to, to, to do that. Um, That's a shame. Pardon? That's a shame. It's a yeah, it is a shame. That's what I told him. And I, I talked to him not too many hours ago, and I said, oh, I was going to mention your name. Now I can't mention his name, I guess. <laughs> no, I, some, you know, if it's Kevin. But he wasn't able to do it. But uh, he is in the guild, and in the future, we will be seeing some of his leather working, which is incredible. Um, I'm trying to think. Let's see. Uh, Quilling, um, your daughter, mm -hmm. she does some beautiful uh, work. And um, Lisa Palmer. Lisa uh, Palmer. <coughs> and um, so a good variety. And I mean, I, we, we will have original work and prints if you're interested in something that's not quite as expensive. Uh, we, so some of the people will be doing prints. We will be doing cards. 
um, there should be a variety, and I mention all of this because this is a chance for people to buy original gifts, yes. which you know I think it's quite nice when you invest in original work. It's a one of a kind. It, it uh, to me, that's a very very nice gift. Now, you know, if you get a, a print. Uh, that is not necessarily one of a kind, but still, it, I think it's a very personal gift. But we're going to have a lot of original work, and um, I could talk on and on about investing in original art. It, it really it pays off in the end, and why do people invest in original art? It could be subject matter. Uh, it could be just something you see in it. It could be, it could, uh, maybe it's a memory of some place, of, of a time, of a people, or something like that. So. Again, investing in original work, it's, it's investing in that person, and it's very, very personal. So I hope some people will come in and uh, maybe find something that they like for themselves. Your, paint, your painting was just on the... The painting? It was. This. Okay, <laughs> this painting now. So I talked about the people that are going to be there and the type of artwork we're going to have. There it is. There it is. Okay, oh, there it is. Now this uh, paint, this is a chalk pastel. And it sure. is done by Michelle Spencer. Oh. We have quite a few artists now from Farmington. We probably have maybe eight from Jefferson County. We have one from Benton, Missouri. We have two from Cape. We have, um, um, let's see, Imperial. I mean, we have uh, people coming in from all over. Like I said, we're upwards around 50 members right now. Good. But in any case, Michelle Spencer is from Imperial. And this is our raffle painting. Uh, the guild selects a painting we vote on. Everybody brings in something. And then the guild votes on the one that they want as their raffle painting that we will raffle off on Sunday at 2 o'clock. And um, the person who, well, she, we, we buy her painting, and then we use her for all of our press releases. So it's yeah. quite nice for her. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, and then the raffle money is going towards our Betty Garrity uh, Art Scholarship. We oh. give one every year. It's a five hundred dollars scholarship that we give to a senior in Saint Genevieve County. It could be Valley Saint Gen or a home school. So um, the money goes towards that and also towards just financing this show. It, it, like anything, it, it costs, you know. Excuse so uh, the tickets are one for a dollar, are six for five dollars. You can get them from any Art Guild member, but we will be selling them at the show. And we will draw the winner uh, Sunday at 2 o'clock, I believe, okay? So that's what this is. And then we also will have a silent auction. And let me back up. I said scholarship. Actually, I could be wrong on this. I, I'm thinking the silent auction money goes towards the scholarship, and I think this goes towards financing the show. I'm probably saying that, and I'm, no, I think that's correct. I think but correct. I, I think one that's is correct. one way and one's the other. We know yeah. that. Um, the silent auction, the guild members bring in baskets. It might be anything from art supplies to uh, personal artwork to wine baskets to uh, who knows. And we always get a really, really nice variety of baskets. And so people can come in and bid on this, and then we close it down at 2 o'clock on Sunday, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in past years, we might have 20 baskets. Is that right, Mary? I mean, it's quite a few. And some really nice, nice stuff in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really is. So, um, <coughs> so that's going on. And let me think, what else is going on that I want to talk about? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Help me out here. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm trying to think. What else uh, I need to say about this is what I was for. the art show? <clears throat> um, we covered the picture. I think I've pretty much covered everything that's going on in I think there. Did. Um, pretty much. Uh, okay, it looks we like we do you serve refreshments, and we do serve uh, punch. Not punch, but Betty Garrity's uh, cider recipe, which is really good. Those of you that know Betty Garrity. It's really a good recipe. Oh, her cider <laughs> is, it's very good, yeah. Uh, so, you know, we do have um, refreshments, and like I said, we'll have extra refreshments Saturday when you uh, <coughs> meet the artist reception. So, 
Uh, I hope a lot of you will come by. And when the he, reception's in, a lot of fun. It, it is really a lot is. of fun, especially with the music. In the uh, paper, they have it, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, listed that you will have information about the silent auction for the Guild's annual art scholarship. Correct. Uh, the silent Good. auction is the, will be the basket yes, that, uh -huh. is that people, uh, the Guild members donate. And it, it, it's hard to say, I, you know, what, what you will find. So. Oh, you find everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I can imagine. I mean, any Guild member can just pretty much work up anything they want to. Is it's there great. a charge for the show? There is no show? charge for the show, none whatsoever. Uh, come in and browse around. I look for us to have quite a bit this year because we have the space. You know, and uh, last year was at the Packy Room, and for many years that's where we had it. And so yeah. we were limited on space. Yeah. But we seem to, to pull a lot of stuff in in spite of. Uh, but this year it should be more wide open. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're hoping, except this year we had to bring in screens. <coughs> We've never had to haul in stuff. You know, usually we can hang on a wall. Well, that this year we couldn't do that. And, and oh dear. that's getting to be hard work for some of us, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> you know, we have to, the guild yes. has to store here and haul there. and. I mean, we really do put in a lot of time and effort to to um, to produce a, a show that we hope people will enjoy, and um, some of the community members will come in and families. As hope, hopefully, will you tell again where it's going to be at? It's going to be at the DeBerg Center, which is at the which is on the square. What is it? Um, Third and Merchant, I guess, but yes, it's on the square. Yes, Third and Merchant. Uh -huh. And uh, Friday, from uh, four to eight. Saturday from 10 until 6, and Sunday from 10 until 4. And the raffle and silent auction ends at um, 2 o'clock on Sunday. 2 o'clock on Sunday. Yes. So that's what our part is. That is great. So if anybody wants a chance, let now, me know. Now, do you have to be present for the silent auction? No, uh, no, you do not have to be present. Okay. And the, uh, and <coughs> the raffle, you do not have to be present today. Okay. Okie doke. Think we covered it all? I think. Mm -hmm. But if not, beautiful. if not, I'll say something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was informative. So... I guess we'll have, uh, so we have, okay, we have been having a discussion about your name. <laughs> <laughs> it is Annette. Yes. And it is Rolf. Rolf. There yes. you go. Mm -hmm. Good job. <laughs> you know I've had a stroke. Uh, <laughs> and I don't remember a things. long time ago. Oh, don't funny. you tell me that. I say Rolf, like, so don't that's forget even I'm older than you. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Well, so, uh, this is our um, holiday Christmas festival program. Um, <clears throat> why don't you? Oh, how about we take this down, right? And you can set it right okay, on that board, right and you'll put I'll it on the everyone. camera. You can what open the program it up looks too. like. <clears throat> and um, it is. We do this every year. This is the. Well, well I'm sorry. Let me show it. Here, here. would you like so. to look at this one? And then you can talk about that one. <laughs> sure, that's funny. That'll I don't really it. need to see it, but it'll, just in case, I guess. Yes. But um, I just wanted everyone to see it because uh, regionally <laughs> I have these. We distribute over 15,000 programs every year in the bi-state area. We go from uh, St. Louis down through Festus, Arnold, uh, Park Hills, all the way out to Park Hills, down to Murfreesboro, Illinois, all over to... Oh, yes. three county radius in southern uh -huh. Illinois, actually wow. four counties in southern Illinois. And so, uh, as well as St. Genevieve, Perryville, Cape Girardeau, down in that area. So, we, they are distributed with um, grocery stores, churches, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, we get people come in all annually anymore from St. Charles, and I'll say, how do you find out about our program? Because I don't advertise in St. not St. Charles, St. Peter's. And it's because in St. Charles, uh, I do have programs dropped off on the main strip and at various churches there. And they say, well, my friend goes to such and such church, and every year they get us a program. Uh -huh. So and it's now their tradition to come here every year. So um, this is the program, and so you can look for this. Well, we'll 
over here. So anyway, yeah. look for it at any supermarket locally or, um, in, you know, if you're out of town, churches and supermarkets, etc. You know, mm -hmm. I have, you know, a yes. lot of the churches are, go out of their way to promote mm -hmm. the program because many of the festi fest excuse me, <laughs> festivities are in our historic churches. Mm -hmm. Okay, this year's program, okay, it is going to be fantastic. All right. Yeah. We are starting with the French donuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At 10 a.m. Saturday. Okay. And at 11 o'clock is the parade. Uh, we have over 130 entries. We have been lining it up. Well, we're now becoming quite renowned for all of our classic cars and our tractors and, you know, so many things. And we'll, <laughs> we'll have the homecoming queens and the, all the, the county fair queens. Um, you know all the beauty you know we have to have our beauty girls and uh, bands um, it's going to be fantastic uh, our parade now I think with us out question the tops in the southeast Missouri and you know southern Illinois without question I know this it just is so so enjoy it you yes. know go and have a great time with it because it is a lot a lot of fun I the road in a vehicle not anything you know like a queen or something but I do know that it's encouraged for the people in the parade to be happy about it it's fun it really is everyone seems to love it's it so fun. much and it's just a fun fun thing to do so uh, and it's going to be equally fun this year. We have a lot of lighted floats, etc. And they, everyone gets more excited every year and does more fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's fun. Well, as far as the Christmas the program afterwards, uh, we have the Lions Park Spectacular, which always is immediately following the parade. The, uh, we have free hot dogs, uh, bottled water, and potato chips for every child 12 and under, as long as they're accompanied oh. by an adult. Uh -huh. And I always want to praise the Lions because they do this as a charity for the community and they don't have to do that because they run in the red on that program but they do it as a write-off because they want to do this and they hand out really nice gifts at the parade they usually hand out some gloves or hats and gloves I mean expensive gifts and so they do this just for the, the community and what it offers the community and with that program they get uh, free photos with Santa free shuttle rides in the historic district We'll have uh, uh, Vernon Fleeg will be play, performing there. And Excellent. He, he's Excellent. A, he's, he's a, good. He's really good. He does yes. country rock, and he's going to be a lot of fun. He's exactly correct for that environment. Yes. Free photos with Santa, and it's a fun, fun afternoon for a family, you know, to do. At the same time, uh, about one o'clock, we'll have uh, Diane Wilson. Will be over at the Auras uh, uh, from one to three. Uh, she will be uh, doing crafts for children, and she does this every year, and that is her contribution to our community. And I want to thank her also, because she's an artist, and yeah. she's in the Art Guild, and she just does this on her own. She contributes all the supplies and her time to do this for the children, and I think that's a wonderful thing. Yes, yes it is. Uh, we have the Friends of St. Genevieve, again, for children, who do uh, reading for children at various locations in town. Mm -hmm. And they have sacks filled with books, you know, like the Polar Express and whatever the child oh, wants yeah. to hear. And they'll sit down and read with the child, which we hope encourages a, a love for reading. That was mm -hmm. one of our goals to do this. And it creates, um, along with the sophisticated program that I'll talk about pretty soon, a real small town charming feeling mm -hmm. when you come into the town. You want it to feel like it's a Hallmark movie for Christmas, you know, <laughs> and it's fun. It's just yes. really, really special. Yes. So in the interim, uh, immediately then, uh, starting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, we have a series of concerts going on all day, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, 1 o'clock and then again at 2 o'clock. I make sure that each of the uh, performers do two shows. That way you can even either see two full shows or you can see multiple shows just kind of keep walking around like you're you're just walking and yes. walking and how fun it is and to hear all the different <coughs> styles of music uh, at the uh, Catholic Church um, the St. Genevieve Catholic Church uh, we are fortunate again to have Southeast Missouri State University their chamber choir will be here doing mm -hmm. two concerts They're and they good. are so elated to come back they love it so much and they are now very much a part of our tradition. Uh, 
they usually will do some Gregorian chant, which I always encourage, some kind of something from the Renaissance, because mm -hmm. that would have been that period, and it would have been sung in a Catholic environment, yes. okay? Uh, and but then they will go out to modern day, you know, the repertoire, sometimes stuff from the Disney channels, you know, all was it Frozen, that was their oh, thing, they love yeah. to do that show, uh, those songs from that show. Uh, and then a new, um, okay, at the same time, one to three, I want to go over the one to three concerts. Uh, we have um, at the Saint uh, at the Evangel Evangel excuse me again Evangelical Lutheran Church mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Second Street. Mm -hmm. I have a string quartet that will be performing there. The quartet has been performing now. They started out as students years ago, and they've I've seen them go through their master's programs, their undergraduate programs, and now. They're all either arch they're orchestra conductors and symphony performers. Um, they get together every year just to come back here to St. Genevieve oh, to do that's this. Wonderful. That's nice. It's wonderful because nice. they really are symphony performers, some up in St. Louis and some down at Paducah. And they all, you know, some of them are orchestra directors, and so it's really wonderful. They will do Austro German music, which um, is chamber music, and that period of time covers um, the Romantic period and the classic period of music. Uh, which is very important. I'll tie that in in just a second. Um, and then um, at that same time, one and two, uh, at the Presbyterian Church, uh, Dr. Isaac LaSalle and his trio will be performing. Yes. And they are all three college professors from SIU Carbondale. They're all heads of their departments, and they are uh, award-winning professors. So uh, and that's really wonderful. We are so fortunate. And again, they love the invite. They want to come back. They love our town, yes. our pristine town. They love this event. Uh, they do it because they love the event, and that's why they do it. They told me this. They think it has such honor, and they they love being a part of this. Um, they these men they perform all over the world. Isaac just got back. He was in South America performing, and so uh, we are so fortunate to have this type of sophistication in this town, and they love being here. So that's going to be wonderful. At 3 o'clock, um, I have several other things going on with the, okay, at 1 to 3 also at the Welcome Center. Uh, I have a new group. They're called Adele Martin and Bluzette. She is a French-speaking uh, Belgian, and she speaks fluent French, and she will be singing only in French. Oh, uh, French cafe music and Christmas tunes. And her partner is a professor at Principia College. Mm -hmm. So these are all intellectuals coming in here to our town, and they love being here. And she called me because she wanted to be in this program. Oh, wonderful. Because it was, it was, she loved it. She'd heard about it up in northern Illinois, and she wanted to be a part of it. And so I said, you're in. <laughs> and so, um, and she's fabulous. I've heard her CD, and it is absolutely fabulous. So that's going to be really, really wonderful. Now, that's going to be down at the... A welcome Center. The welcome yes, Center. Yes, and it, 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 she's fabulous. I really give her a high, high, high mark. Okay? So uh, at 3 to 5 at the Welcome Center... Uh, we will have uh, a violinist there performing uh, a medley of suites from J.S. Bach. And worldwide, uh, the top cellos um, in the world, Yo-Yo Ma, for instance, yes. will perform in front of 30,000 people doing Bach cello suites. So to have the artist do these suites, A, it's really hard to perform those, and B, to do this, again, the sophistication for a town this size is off the Richter scale. You know, it's just amazing. So we're, I feel very fortunate to have the artist performing there also. And Abigail Sage is her name, okay? Uh, again, at 3 o'clock, Stormy Bennett, our special Stormy Bennett. Uh, he's uh, Chief Bennett's father. Uh -huh. And he's a former police chief, too, I believe. Of DeSoto, wasn't he? I can't remember. I don't know. Okay. Hmm. Well, we don't know about his career <laughs> <laughs> on that level. But I do know he is a brilliant guitarist. Oh, oh he yes. is great. He does oh, the he... thumb rhythms. And, uh, like, it's a different style than Dr. LaSalle. Uh, and it is, but it, he is so gifted. I, you just like a Chet Atkins type style. And he's a great talk. melodic oh, singer. Yes. He does. He's got a beautiful singing voice. Oh, he and is. he's got a following. I, during the great blizzard a few years ago, 
I mean, he was the only one that had anybody show up, you know. <laughs> People, I think they must have put chains on their tires to get there, you know. And he had a big crowd, and so uh, he's wonderful. He comes back every year. And, and where will he be? He'll be at the Auras at 3 o'clock. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, so uh, then at 4 o'clock also, uh, we will have... Uh, the Art Guild will have their reception. As we've ex where Juanita was sharing that information with us. Uh, the Academy Hill will be. For, uh, I'm gonna have to talk slower. Okay, Academy Hill See will be performing. Time. Okay, yeah. Time. yeah, Thank you. You're so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> You're a good grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Academy Hill will be performing again this year. The reason. They are in that particular slot is during the 1930s, I believe, the art colony was developed. Yes, 30s and, and 40s. Yes, and that would have been the music that would have been being been played in that time period. It would have been bluegrass music. Yes. And that's why uh, they have been selected to perform in that location. So they offer a oh, lot. Yeah, Again, they're really very, very good. And they're fun to listen to. They're real fun, and they're local. It's Rosie and Sam Huey, yeah, their good. friend oh, Frankie, yeah. you know. And, I know uh, Rosie real well. Oh, and they have... She has a beautiful singing voice, and they are all three so, so, so gifted. And it's fun. Everyone looks forward to the Art Guild yeah, show every good. year. They have a good crowd when they play. You really do, yeah, and you do. get a big crowd. Everyone loves to hear them, and they love going to the show and meeting the artists. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, again, at 4 o'clock, the Gibbard Valley uh, will have a... Um, reception and I will have Megan Hothouse who's uh, one of the uh, violinists I've told has been with me for oh gosh 11 years <laughs> a long long time she's got a married has a baby now so I can see her when she was a baby you know so anyway she's been with me a long time um, she will be performing Baroque music uh, and the reason uh, I'll be getting into this a second I have to tell you this because the Baroque music was the what would have been performed in that period of time when that keyboard house, well, that probably didn't, could have been romantic and classical, and classical, but at the same time, the town was founded during the Baroque period in 1735, and that's mm -hmm. why I always have a Baroque artist at that keyboard house yes. for their reception. And that reception is really quite good also, and I always encourage people to go to both mm -hmm. because it's fun, and they have different feelings, and it's a different environment. Um, I say, if you want the wine, you better go to the art guild. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you find the wine. <laughs> but they're both wonderful yeah. receptions. They really are, and they, they get are. huge crowds. Uh, I almost forgot the, another huge 3 o'clock concert, and it's a one concert only. It's one hour. Uh, doc, uh, Professor Matt Polish, who is the head of the pipe organ division at SEMO, Southeast Missouri State mm -hmm. University, I had him performing uh, last year, a pipe organ concert, because... He was doing all, mostly uh, Baroque through 20th century classical music. And he called me last summer. And he's also uh, the music director for St. Paul's Lutheran Church down in Jackson, mm -hmm. which is a very huge church. Mm -hmm. And he asked if he could bring up uh, 48 cantorai singers and oh. uh, a bell choir. Oh, so he'll be doing really? his pipe organ and his cantorai singers along with his where, where at the in the bell choir at the Catholic Church, at the you know. Church. So oh, yeah. I'm gonna let's see what, what he write on here. Or like that. I'll probably have to have somebody with glasses read it for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, oh, let's see. Uh, what are some of yours? I'm just saying, I'm just <laughs> yeah, you've got a few there. Yeah, it's gonna be a, a festival of uh, yeah a festival of lessons. Is and that carols. Saturday or Sunday? Yeah. It'll be Sunday. Sunday. No, Saturday. Saturday. No, I don't, Saturday. Don't, I don't want to get that confused because you need to see that. Mm -hmm. It's called a Festival of Lessons. And it's some traditional Christmas tunes, but it's really a classical thing. And it's going to be quite polished and quite magnificent. And it's going to be right after the chamber choir at the church. So uh, you're going to have two big, huge choir situations there and different types of styles. So I know. <laughs> I know. I want to go to all of these, and I can't. Oh yeah, so you have to respect the art guild because they do, and and Donna Rouse well, like, too. Okay. <laughs> and because every you, everyone has their slot, and they work yeah. so hard to make it all work. Because mm -hmm. everything goes on, and they would all love to be at some of these other events, yeah. but they yeah, are they all would. helping us and make the event a magnificent experience. So I do thank both of these women. Um, yeah, it's going to be really sensational. I'm really excited about it. Um, 
and he charged me the same price as by himself. That's why I think it's really exciting. I'm making jokes. I'm just teasing. But, <laughs> but, but no, it's good. Good. But, uh, yes. Yeah, he just wanted to bring them up. I said, well, bring them up. You know, so we'll try it out. So I know it's going to be wonderful. Uh, Cantari singers, they sound a lot like a cappella singers. So yes. it's, only, it's a little bit different style. Yeah. So it's going to be different than the chamber choir. It's going to have a totally different style so it would be like listening to different Christmas albums you know so if you go to both so in the interim Sunday then oh yeah then goes on till that all this goes on till six we have the tree trimming Bill and Patty Nager uh, they will be performing again this year along mm-hmm. with the magical the high school magical choir uh-huh. uh, and I think they add a, a great yeah, sense totally. of style yes. to it they dress yes. in period costumes and sing only yes, in French both and they uh, they they do a wonderful <clears throat> job. So I feel like we're very fortunate to have yes. our local artists, and I really want to praise our local artists also. Um, and I've always kept them because I feel like we have to have our local talent. So we do. I and, glad to hear that. Glad and so that. Um, in the interim, uh, the tree trimming it is. Oh, we'll have over two hundred people there. You know, everyone seems to love it. Uh, they have Gary Shiel is the host, and he dresses oh, period costume. Yes. And he's hilarious. He always makes everybody laugh and smile. And <laughs> and of course, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be there handing out candy canes. And the community tree is lit. But we also have another tree inside of the uh, Welcome Center that everyone should go see because every year we have the local school children uh, will make handmade Christmas ornaments and it goes on the tree and every year we have different ornaments made because we have different children making these ornaments so every child gets to have their ornament on the tree oh, so man. that's what's really yes. important that's also because yes. it's all handmade and it's really special so um, the then Audubon's they will be having um, a gentleman oh, it's Mr. Cox I have to look his name up I do apologize oh, okay where are we here Golly, Shannon I Cox. I yes, and he has been working at this, wow. though, I think. Yeah. Yeah. A tape he's player uh, up performed there at the uh, old Grand Ole Opry, also, Shannon Cox has. And he's been a backup singer for Blake Shelton and Waylon Jennings. And he'll be, form- be performing at Audubon's Grill, you know, for uh, Saturday night. Oh, oh so, in the evening, then. Yeah, in the evening. So, and then on Sunday, we'll have... Um, at the Welcome Center, starting at 12.30, I believe it's on the schedule, uh, is, um, what time do I go? Yeah, 12.30. So I have two shows, 12.30 to 1.15, and then 1.30 to 2.15. You know, when people just walking around the town, eating lunch, just casually wanting to walk around, uh, they can go see Megan Hothouse perform. She'll be doing impressionistic music at that particular location. And that's a different, or impressionistic music is during uh, the impressionistic period. What you know, location? The music, uh, that'll be at the Welcome Center. Okay. And she gets a nice crowd. Yeah. Um, and so um, then that will be like to cover the impressionistic art period yeah. also. These are all different periods. They all go together. You know, the different periods, the art would have been the same as the music and everything is like a, you know, goes together fashion. Yeah. Good. So uh, then Dr. LaSalle will be at the Lutheran Church doing classical guitar. He'll be doing 500 years of French, German, English, and Italian music. And again, he gets a huge following. He's fan- and he'll have his lute with him also. He will educate you while he's performing. He'll say, this song was popular in 1883, but it really was written in 1742. And he, you know, then he'll go into a little bit of detail about how it's written, etc. And then you're all like, just amazed, you know, <laughs> because he's amazing. He's like beloved you now in the town. Everybody loves him. And so, um, again, we're so lucky to have him back. Um, and then it gives people, just, you know, just to walk around and relax. And uh, then they can casually go Christmas shopping for you know, 30 minutes or so after the concerts, or they can just walk up to the church and relax and meditate for a while because at three o'clock we will have Terry Langerak and I feel very gifted to have gotten her to we're very fortunate um, she is a renowned harpist uh, she not only does classical and ethereal uh, music but she will be doing classic uh, rock and jazz and oh, many of her own pieces art. are their own <laughs> so I've ne- wow. you've never and again I've heard her CD and it's fantastic I've never you heard a rock harpist <laughs> and, really? and she's really yeah. cutting edge and so it's fabulous and so that will be the preliminary uh, to our great our very own municipal band our woodwind concert I mean our 
symphonic wind uh, ensemble. So not woodwind, it's all the winds. Okay, it's everything, the horns, the winds, everything. So, and that will be uh, at four o'clock then on Sunday. The harpist is three to four, and then four to five is the uh, symphonic ensemble, mm -hmm. you know, with our municipal band. So it's gonna be a very grand weekend. I'm going to be a very oh, tired old woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can manage all that. <laughs> It's, it's so much fun, and I always tell everyone, you, if you can go to as many concerts as you can attend, you will be a changed person by the end of the weekend, by the Monday morning at the end of the weekend when it's over. Uh, you will have this happy, euphoric feeling, and it's a, it's a wonderful experience. So I just enjoy every minute of it mm -hmm. while you're there. So. Well, that's marvelous, and I can't, can't get over your memory. Oh. <laughs> So, but that, uh, I couldn't it remember it all that. I have all I have. Well, she yeah. studied it, and now it's her passion. I so I, well, well, I do want to thank our sponsors too. This is so 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 important. Yes. Okay, yes. because uh, again, let's turn this over. On the back of all the programs, fifteen thousand programs, we have list of the sponsors from the diamond sponsors at the top, platinum, gold, and silver sponsors. But every sponsor is so valuable to us. Because without these sponsors, we could not perform. We could not get these performers. We could not even do these programs. Mm -hmm. So that is very, very important to thank them. Mm -hmm. So are there any questions? I just want my thing back. I don't want to miss that. I'll give. Thank you. So you can have no, oh, I think yes, it's thank you. Job. I was going to try to find and thank one. you <laughs> for all that. But I could never remember all that. Oh. That's, so. That we just <laughs> and but what gets great. me that everything is free. Everything is free, and that's why it was designed to be free. Because uh, when I had moved here uh, from Dallas, oh gosh, 2005, it seemed like I felt that um, we needed. I grew up in a little town originally. I moved. I lived in Dallas a large bulk of my life, but I did grow up in a small town, and this is something I would have yearned for. You know, instead of listening to Elijah, ooh, you know, what I mean? <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's all right, and I'm it's from place. Texas. That just really blew me. <laughs> but it's, I I agree uh, with you though, Annette, that we need culture. bits of all of it. Yeah, and it's cultural because this can change a child's life. I have uh, become friends with quite a few people in town. And there is a young mother here and every in town that I like very much. And every year she gets so excited about this event and she takes her little bitty kids to every music concert she can possibly take them to so that they can learn about these different styles of music. Mm -hmm. And this will educate a child as well as a person who maybe doesn't feel like going to the city, you know, to St. Louis to see a concert like this. Oh a, they don't no. want to fight the traffic, or maybe it's too expensive, or whatever it is, yes. for whatever reason. So it can really change a child's life. It can ch change so many types of lives. And there's people from southern Illinois that would prefer not driving up to the city. They yes. would prefer going to a small historic town that you know, is know. compatible with their spirit we can, we and enjoy this culture. We can walk the entire town in 20 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and just have a, and, and feel safe and, and feel comfortable and, you know, in, in an element that they understand that is uh, a comfortable setting for them. And like, they, a lot of the same people will come every year and you can start making friends with these people, you know, different kind of friend, but you'll see them from year to year to year to year. Yes. And you'll get to where you maybe care about that person. Mm -hmm. You might not go to their funeral, but uh, yeah, no, no, I'm just no, making jokes. But, yes. it was, but you can be really care about them because they will be here back. They'll be back. Uh, they come back every year. They do. They do. They love this so much. And it offers a lot, and like I said, especially from all ranges, from little kids to big kids like yourself. <laughs> so, I am thinking. But it's true, you know, it does. And you know, you can love being here and mm -hmm. enjoy every minute of it. That's what St. Genevieve has. That's when I first moved here. I realized the town was just unique. And it's, it seems like everybody goes together to bring it all to 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is a special thing, place. And it's just uh, Everest being special. It is. St. Genevieve is a very special community. It's very, very special. And at all the events, like, uh, they do come together and try to make it work and make it happen. It's beautiful. And I, I think this, this coming weekend is just going to be gorgeous. It's going to be fabulous. And I want to thank the Lord because I'm really excited about having that on the same weekend. And I wish I'd known it because I would have put it on the program. And okay. I want to thank the Art Guild again. Every year, I I always thank them because uh, they are such a part of the community, and the people are our new friends that come to visit every year as a destination. Uh, that they uh, have learned to love the Art Guild also, and they need to know that's part of our community also. Mm -hmm. So I do want to thank both of these ladies for their contributions. And thank you too for having me. Well, thank you for coming. I tell you, you. Your mind is just oh, thank you. loaded. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for coming. Yes. Well, thank you again, All and you. I will uh, see you next weekend. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. And now we got Jeff. Thank you. This is a pretty tough act to follow. Uh, yes, it is. You, you've got I'll, your. I'll be pretty boring compared to those young ladies. Well, like everything else, Santa Claus is coming again. And as you found out that weekend at eighth and ninth, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yes. And when I plan my event, I try to plan it away from everything. And like the young lady said about the first mm -hmm. weekend, I always plan on the Christmas parade being on the first weekend, then I'll have my thing on the second weekend. <laughs> that didn't work. No. <laughs> uh, the community center is having their Santa bash on Saturday that day after the parade. So oh we got the parade, gosh. we got that, and then All everything this. else is going on and on Sunday. Well right in the middle of that we're having chocolate cop on Sunday morning. Very, very excited. I'm very, very proud. This is our tenth anniversary. Good. When I came over here, they said you'd never fit in. You're an outsider. <laughs> took me about three years, and I want to start shopping cop. And my boss said, "Okay, we got some rules. This is you better not ask people for donations. Where are you going to get the kids?" And he allowed me to approach the American Legion, and when I dealt, met, met the American Legion, yes, one of the uh, board members of the American Legion was on the Elks board. <laughs> And they said, well, we'll give you some money. The Elks give us some money. The Eagles are in on it, too. Yep. They're uh, uh, one of the local I guess, uh, businessmen. He said, I won't be on it. The American Legion Rider. So we started with four uh -huh. people donating. I know. I, I'm uh, in the auxiliary on both the Legion and the Eagles, and I know that we do things to make sure we have that money for you. You betcha. And, you know, we are... Well, like Rotary Club, we're on their banner. We're, that's a that's one of their our supporters now. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's something that they're going to you know they support this organization. This, we're on their banner, so we do this, we do this, we do this, you know. And I'm really proud, just as these ladies were saying, Saint Genevieve is a very caring community. Oh, it is. It's if you good. have a worthwhile oh, issue, I have found that. There's a lot of people who support you. They want to make sure they got a leader first. If you're a leader, they'll back you up, but there's a lot of people who won't jump front. They won't no, no, be the no, leader. No. And, and that's all right with me because they've made my program a success. And uh, this is a program that you can't sign up for. It, there are people, that, the names are submitted to me and I pick out of there, and I try to pick everybody I can. And what we do is we pick according to how many donations we have, and we give them a free selected amount of money. And if we got enough money to take 150 kids shopping, and I got that many names, then we try to do that. Uh, we got some people that withdraw from the program, but they don't. I might pick them. this no, we, you helped us last year. We're doing all right this year. Oh, good. Yeah. And, and, and it, it makes us proud. Yeah. You know, 
So uh, after the very first year, like I said, we brought 50 kids down, and the kids under the age of kindergarten is for kindergarten through fifth grade, and their siblings didn't get anything. So we had little siblings crying and upset because they didn't get anything, and I couldn't take it. But we didn't have nothing for them. So I initiated a toy drive. In the first year, I think we had 600 toys. We went up to 800 toys. I think we got a little less last year. But anybody that doesn't go shopping, if I got 200 lists and I'm going to take 150 shopping, those 50 gets toy baskets. And they don't get just one toy. And the I same thing, <laughs> when I go down, the kids that are under kindergarten, I go down and I'll pick them out three or four toys and they'll get toys and that, that stuff too. Uh, I make goodie bags. Every kid gets something. Uh, uh, Country Mart provides a party room for us. Uh, the very first year, I invited everybody to come down. I was going to meet outside of Alco at the time because I didn't know anything about the party room. <coughs> that morning, it was 10 below zero and sleeting, <laughs> sleeting and freezing rain. Oh, my goodness. So I was going to have 100 people standing outside in the rain waiting to get in the alcove. That Friday, it was a Saturday then, on a Friday afternoon, somebody told me, said, do you know they just got a party room at Rosers? And so I went up and I asked the lady, Ms. Cox. And I said, are you a party? Yep. I said, is it open tomorrow? It can be. And I said, uh, how much is it going to cost me? She said, it's yours. And they've been a sponsor for us every year. And Country Mart provides donuts, coffee, and milk I know. for our volunteers and for our kids. And so that's where we get started. We use a lot of officers. We use officers from our office. We use employees from our office. Our secretaries all come down. They bring their husbands with them. Some of the guys bring their wives with them. Uh, I invite some community members and leaders to come up, especially from organizations that's donated, because I want them to see, go back and say, hey, you know, we've done a real good thing. Know where their money went. Yes. That's important. And uh, it makes a big difference. Because we had, we had, we'll have 40 or 50 people donating stuff now instead of four. <laughs> and. You know, it, it's really tough. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different this year, and I'm going to see what that is. Uh, hopefully it works out. Uh, but we had an organization here in town. I was told to go see this person because they wanted to help out with Shocker Cop. And when I went there, the very th first thing out of their mouth was, what are we going to get for it? And that struck a nerve with me really fast. So they promised to make a donation, and I never did receive that donation. But it got me thinking, how do I show appreciation to everybody that's made this a success? So I was going to take poster board last year, put everybody's names on it, mm -hmm. and put it down here where we had our shopping cart. Well, it'd take a pretty good size poster board. <laughs> yeah. So, my boss said, Sheriff Stolzer said, what about a video? And I'm thinking, oh, that's going to take a long time. So, we have a very talented person here in our county, Gary Widener. A lot of people know him. Oh, yes. And he said, I don't know what we can do. So he put together a video, Rose Like Credits. Nice Christmas music, nice Christmas scene, and everybody's name is on there. If you donated, it's on there. You don't have dollar amounts. You don't have gold club number, because I don't care if it's one dollar or a thousand dollars, you're just as important. Go those one dollars add up. You bet. So I take that down and I throw it on the laptop and I put it on the wall. It's about 12 feet wide. It shows on the wall. So all the parents that are sitting there waiting for the kids to go shopping, 
are seeing this is the people why your why your child is shopping today. Mm -hmm. And it gets put on our TV station. So the people at home, you know, well maybe I ought to go to this store because they support our kids. Or I ought to do my business with this store because they support our mm -hmm. kids. That's right. It's good advertisement. And that's the best way that I know to show my such appreciation. Mm -hmm. and, and again, that's why I invite people down. We can only, like I said, we use our, our department. I invite St. Jim City Police Department. They come up. Uh, I invite uh, the Highway Pro. Sometimes they bring, they said a couple person. And community leaders. I have lots of volunteers that want to come help. I just don't have the room. <laughs> to have everybody there, or I would. That's great. But we bring in, uh, I'm hoping to have 150 kids there this year. I was going to say, how many are you going to have? And I'm hoping to bring 30 to 35 kids in per hour. And they'll leave out by the time they get back. Uh, I want to thank uh, Ballard Bus Service because they provide a bus and a driver. And Terry. Uh, we had Carl the first couple of years, and he was lovely. Uh, done a fine job. He, we lost him. He passed away. So Terry took over, and uh, he dresses his grandson up as an elf, and he decorates up the bus, and he'll drive him from the party room up to Dollar General and back and forth and shuttle force. That's what I was going to ask you. Where do you shop with them? We it? shop with Tractor Supply and Dollar General. Okay. We used to use the alcohol, but then they left out. Yeah. And my promise to the community. They said, where are you going to spend this money at? I said, in St. Genevieve. That's if right. I didn't do that, mm -hmm. we probably wouldn't get a lot of donations. Yeah. But as long as I'm physically able to keep that up, that's what we're going to spend it. Good. And I've had people say, well, there isn't anything at Tractor Supply. Oh, yeah. kids in one. We spent over $8,000 there last year. <laughs> You know, they got some coats and stuff. And granted, they don't have a lot of, of clothing our size, but they do, do have coats and they have boots and stuff. But they, their employees, they've got a warehouse full of stuff right now for us. They make two different toy aisles, one for the boys and one for the girls, and it's full. And as it goes down, they've got people shoving them right back on the shelf. Oh, and my. And they keep it going. Oh, my. Dollar General, it's the same way. You're uh, wonderful. Their branch manager mm -hmm. come down and last year and I think the year before, set out a table, provided bottled waters for all the escorts and for the kids and had plates of cookies laid out for oh everybody. My. So it, it's, it's a big family deal and the kids have a blast, the, 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 the shoppers have a blast, you know. Uh, what, I, what I will end up doing is if I pick these kids, I'll send Monday or Tuesday letters will go home to them. Because if I send them home any sooner, they'll lose them. So by month, by Wednesday, they should have a letter at home saying your child was picked. And I put an appointment time on there. 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, or 11 o'clock. <coughs> and we also ask for their uh, clothing sizes. So that way we know, we, mm -hmm. we try to encourage the, our shoppers to get at least one clothing item. Mm -hmm. Whether it be a pair of shoes or a jacket or a pair of pants, whatever we can get for them. Because they'll still have, they can spend $50 on a pair of boots. And they might still have some money for something else, you know. Uh, I don't know from year to year what they're going to get to spend until we see what we're funds. How much you've got, yeah. So, uh, and we, we do other things too. We had one gentleman the first year bought $50 worth of groceries. That was his, all his money. That doesn't happen anymore. If we, I will allow kids to buy snacks and soda. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're buying groceries. Then our area churches, says, we have, yes. you call us. You bet. And we will deal with that. So, and we have bought, a whole being myself and major shop has taken families for Christmas dinners. Mm -hmm. You know, major, because one little boy said, I, all I want for Christmas is make sure my family has a nice dinner. So we provided a nice dinner. And uh, we do, uh, I have full support of my sheriff. And I, can't, I couldn't do it without, my, you know, without us. My, my, our secretaries helped me out a lot. They're down there. Uh, uh, like I said, my guys, 
the sheriff is always there unless he's got urgent business. The major's there, our lieutenants are there, uh, and they look forward to it every year. And uh, it runs pretty good. Uh, like I said, I, I give out uh, goodie bags, goodie bags. Uh, this year, we're gonna have Santa Claus there. Uh, he can't be there the whole time because six hours in that suit's tough. <laughs> but I had one promise that he'd come by, so we're going to have Santa Claus there. We've had face painting in the past. Uh, the problem with that is the kids love it, but there's so much activity. I mean, for an hour, they get in there and they're hyped up and let's go shopping, let's go shopping, you know. They do it sit still. I know, because I face And they're trying, to, they're trying to eat and I said, let's go on the bus. And they're trying to wrap each their, 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 their donut and their milk. And, and like I said, I give them stuff. And, and uh, uh, like I said, Santa Claus is going to be there. I know I'm forgetting something. Of course, oh, Santa Claus batteries. Has to, uh, Santa Claus has to go and get toys together for right. his sleigh, and, right. you know. Uh, batteries, very Something important. that we do, batteries are expensive. Mm -hmm. So if the kids have to go buy batteries, they may buy a remote control, remote control item and takes batteries, well, there goes some of their money. So I make sure that I have two sets of batteries for them because the very first set of batteries isn't going to last long because they'll play with it until it's <laughs> plumb dead. So we give another set. So we provide all of them for them as well. Uh, we just bought a bunch of batteries just the other day and I'm geared up for that. And if we run out, we send them up and down through there. I got little gophers that run back and forth, so go get me some more batteries, you know. And uh, of course, the shoppers help them put their batteries in and, and different things. And we try to send little girls with young ladies because some of the guys have no idea how to shop for kids, much <laughs> no, less right. little girls and little boys. And so we pair them up. And uh, once you do it, you're hooked. <laughs> Don't you do it, you're hooked. And, uh, uh, now, you do have Dollar General, and you have two Dollar Tree. Dollar, Dollar, we go to Dollar Tree also. And Dollar uh, General, and you have tractors. Tractor Supply. No. Not tractor Supply, Dollar Tree, and Dollar and General Store. Um, when I first mentioned this many, many years ago, uh, about starting a shop with Kyle, one of the people that worked for us then, said, well, maybe we can get Fowler's bus service and we'll load them up, take them to Paraville to Walmart. Never got off the ground. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never got off the ground. No. So, but that is my promise I made to people, and as long as we can shop locally, we're going to do that. I wish we had something else. Uh, I will tell you, we've uh, branched out to uh, Bloomsdale. No, we have. Bloomsdale. Oh, Bloomsdale. We have a lot of uh, kids from Bloomsdale, and we didn't know how to. We got people from Bloomsdale now that donate. Well, they so have a big general dollar up there now. So we can't shop with a cop up there because the logistics again, but they collect toys for us. They do a toy drive, and they help us that way. That's wonderful. Loves truck stop. The first year they was there, first year they, first or second year they was there, uh, right, you know, the closer it gets to Christmas, the cheaper their toys get because they don't want to keep them to the first no. of the year. No. So they were discounting, discounting, and I get a call from the manager and said, you need some more toys? Yeah. I said, I can always use them. Come on over. Well, the manager and the assistant manager took two carts and walked along the shelves going, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Just raking them off, and then, of course, they, they, they ring them up, and then, because they have to count for them, but it's almost $800 for the toys. Oh, my goodness. I had my car, you, I had the whole front seat piled up, I barely had enough room to sit, and the back seat, the back window, the trunk, everything was completely full of toys. Now, we get a donation every year from the, it's called the Love's Family. It's the club's family, it's, it's at who's, who owns all of those truck stops. Mm -hmm. And it's, they got their own order. It's, it's, it's from the Love's family itself. Mm -hmm. And we get an endowment, we get, they give us a good donation every year. And, uh, That's really proud of that. 
So we get, like I said, we, uh, Bloomfield helps us out. And if I can work something out, maybe on a makeup day, if we don't, if weather runs us out or we need some kids that can't come that particular day and we're gonna make up day, maybe I could utilize Bloomfield Dollar General and That'd Loves. Because yeah. Loves carries coats, Loves got all kinds of knickknacks and they toys all and kinds all, all kinds of stuff in there. So I've never uh, been there. Oh it's it, it, it's it's an eye opener. I mean I when I go traveling, I actually want to stop at Loves or, or truck stop to see all the stuff they've got in there. <laughs> you know? And so uh, you know those truck drivers, they're home away, they're gone off from home all the time. So if they slide in and buy their kids something, while they're getting gas or whatever, that's why they have all that stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, like I said, I I, uh, I want to utilize them too. And I want to thank everybody that, that's been involved in this. And, and uh, I've got one person that says he's been my mouthpiece since the beginning and he'll They'll ask him, well, how can we help? Can, can we do this? He said, you can go to him, but he can't come to you. <laughs> and that's how, that's, that's how the word got out. Uh -huh. and, uh, people will see us, uh, you know, the little old ladies, we'd be in alcohol, little ladies walk around. I said, what's all these kids doing in here? Said, well, it's chocolate cup for kids. And they'll pull off their wallet. Well, here's $20. You get them a little extra. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, it just... I don't know what else to say, and then I know we're probably no, we're way fine. over. No, we're fine. No, we're fine. But it's fine. just uh, we're fine. I think it's wonderful that you started it, and I'm glad that you let me be a part of it when you first got started because I did some face painting, and I enjoyed it. But the kids wouldn't sit still; they were so right. anxious and so so excited and everything. But it did go good for the few times. I think we did it two years in a row. I think face painting. But we uh. You know, I know what we do. By the time we get done, Christmas is over. We'll probably have around 300 kids that we will have, have help one way or another. And it kind of aggravates me. You know, we don't put all, we don't put this on the Channel 4 News. We don't put it in the newspaper. I know. But you got places in the city, in different counties, that oh, we done a shopping cop. There's one I would mention in the county north of us and they said you know, it's a big big department it's not a little local county it's a big department and we did shop at a cop we took 35 kids we bought them all a bicycle we give them three hundred dollars a piece well that's fine but you're in a huge county you know you've got more kids than that why not split that up give them a hundred dollars a piece that you could have took over a hundred kids, well, yeah, yeah, and give those thirty-five bicycles to somebody else. So now you're talking one hundred and fifty kids instead of thirty-five. Yeah. That's why we do what we do. We give them a set amount. Sometimes we can give them more money, but we all agreed hundred dollars. We've been as high as hundred dollars when we did it. So, but that don't happen all the time. But that's a lot of money. It is, and I have seen, I've been there, and when, the, when those kids have come in, just so anxious, and oh my God, they just can't wait to go with them. the cops, and just, they were just, just like that, yes. <laughs> they're just all over the place. <laughs> and they were just, it's it's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful program. And, one, and, and another, there's a, there's a, another reason for the shop of the cop, is because there's so many times the kids don't see us unless there's a problem in the family. Yes. No. Or we go in the grocery stores. You better behave. He's gonna take you to jail. Yeah. No. And right no. away, they're taught to be scared of us. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Or they show wrong. up and they, we're gonna drink mom and dad or, or whatever, or brother and sister. And this is to show that you know we've got kids. Yeah. The only difference between us and your parents, we're wearing a uniform, and we're there to protect you. And we want you to know that anytime you need help. We're here. And whether right. it be the city PD, whether it be the highway patrol, we've had ambulance, EMS personnel there. Mm -hmm. Because if the EMS shows up and you, you know, the child's involved in a wreck or something, they're scared to death. So we're the people they're going to be seeing. So we want them to know 
you don't have to be afraid of us. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, you're going, mm -hmm. and there's nobody afraid of me. <coughs> I, had, I was at uh, teaching my dare class today, and they often always put stuff in a dare box. It's anonymous notes that want to ask me questions. And they asked me lots of different things. How many kids do you have? And I said, with you guys, about two to three to four thousand. What? And I said, once you're my dare kid, you're always my dare kid. You'd be 35 years old before you have your kids and you're getting married, and I'll still be, you'll still be my dare kid. If I'm still around and you retire, you'll still be my dare kid. So one of the kids asked me today, you put him over here and is it today, next week's my last lesson, but normally it was today. He said, are you going to miss us? <laughs> and I said, no. Oh, man, their mouths flew open. <gasps> You're not going to miss us? And I said, no, because I'm not going anywhere to miss you. I'm in schools all the time. You see me at the grocery store. You see me at the fair. You see me at the parades. So I don't have to miss you because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and they just thought that was me because I, I said, I'm not going to miss you because we're not leaving each other. I think that's just wonderful. That's good. That's and good. I, and I got that's good. the best job in the world. I, was, you know, I, I, was, I wouldn't know what I could do uh, when I go into schools. There's law and order in school until I show up. As soon as I walk through the door, they run out. Also, the car to give me hugs. I'll get 80 to 100 hugs a day. You know, I went in today. The kindergarten just now finished. We're just finishing up their lunch. They don't really get to their trays. Also, my car. Also, my car. So I sit down. I'm ready to come. I had to get up and leave because I disrupted it so much the teacher couldn't get them back in line. I had to leave. I thought, I will leave so you get your class back. And they wanted a high five and a hug and everything, you know. And, you know, I think that's wonderful. The Grinch show shows when he starts getting hard, his heart yeah. gets bigger. Uh -huh. Every time I get a hug, my heart gets bigger. <laughs> and one of these days it's going to blow right out of my chest. You know? <laughs> but if I can do these little things and make a difference in the kids and show the parents that we care about their kids and show the parents that this community cares about their kids, it's a, it's a, it's a part of a battle that we're winning. That's the very important thing that I understand from what you've said all through this. This is community. I was wondering, where do you shop? You know, because I figure, well, Bestest, Farmington, mm -hmm. uh, you know, around like that. But uh, keeping it in town, I know we don't have a whole lot, but I think we have enough to get the kids going. Right. You know, right. we do have. And. Uh, it's, and you know that's something that, that that's as community important. leaders, you know, <clears throat> you could go to these stores like Tractor Supply and say, hey, we don't have a place for kids to buy a lot of clothing. Why no, we don't. Can't you talk to, you talk to your guys and say, hey, they have stuff for little kids and they have stuff for bigger kids. But the stuff that we need, they don't have a lot. So yeah. can you get some for us? You know? They're your store. Uh -huh. Talk to them. Talk to them and hey, why don't you try to get some stuff in here? And that way we can give you more business. Mm -hmm. You know, not just a farming business. You know, we, you know, you're our community store. You know, that's right. And all we have is Dollar General, and they can only handle so much. If you can get in, you know, a little extra, see what you can do, and, and it might make a difference. If it, if it's a community shows, hey. We'll help you out if you help us out, you know. I, I can't, to me, I just, I can't understand. I don't go out of town and buy too much. I try to buy here in town as much as possible, and I can't understand why people don't do that more, buy in town more, because it's it's a nice community. It's it's wonderful. It's I've been limited. here since 1960, and I have, I love everyone in it. I adore this. I oh, really I understand. Do. I haven't been up there. I've been employed for 12 years since August, and uh, there's nothing like any place I've ever been. Well, I've been here just uh, 20, my husband passed away in 2011, I moved over here in April of 2012. And by August of 2012, I had a, I just like to volunteer, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a little old to go back to work. Right. 
But I had a couple of volunteer jobs, and next thing I know, I had a little part-time job, and I, I had several jobs. I sing in several church choirs, and well, I go. I visit St. Vincent de Paul. I try to help them out a little bit on Wednesday up in Glendale. I'll stop by and I'll help them carry some stuff and do what I can. I go down here on Thursdays to one here in town and try to help them a little bit and do what I can. And I can see how much they try to help. And uh, recently, I was involved in a situation that somebody had to be relocated. Somebody needed some help. And they got lots of help. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, yes. it's a wonderful community because I've raised four kids in this and sent four kids to these schools and I loved every teacher and everyone that was in this community. So, so wonderful. It just, yeah. it, it just, they just all felt like family and I didn't yeah. come in here as a stranger. I came in here and they were just so friendly and everything and I just, I love it. I love the people. The school system, uh, we were talking the other day, I ran into a little boy. Uh, he's visually challenged. And uh, we had a chat, he's in first grade. And I told him about my eye problems and different things. And our school system really works with our special needs kids. Oh, they do. Yes. You know, and they're really good with them. They do a lot of stuff for them. And our community supports them too. You know, you that's bet. how we got Challenger Ball Field. That's how we got the, the park. We there. have a Just wonderful a support for the challenged people. And uh, our department does too, and I do too. Uh, well, with Camp Rainbow, you know, mm -hmm. involved in that, the cancer camp. I go to Muscle District Camp. So, I mean, uh, I just can't say enough about our department and our community that, and, that allows me to get involved and that supports me when I do. So, well, that's all I have, ladies. Otherwise, we'd be sitting here all night talking. <laughs> Well, I think we've done real well. We do. Thank, Thank you so much. Right. And when is your Christmas program again? Uh, December 12th. Okay. Mm -hmm. December 12th will be our last. <clears throat> okay. One, just one more thing, Officer McCarty. The, say, the, the time, the day, the date, and the place to meet. Okay. Uh, everything will be on the invitations I sent on to the kids, but it's going to be held at their uh, Rocher's Country Mart Party Room, and they'll start at 8 o'clock, and I'll have kids come in every hour. Uh, right now, I'm full on volunteers, uh, but if you'd like to help, you give me a call sometime at the office. Uh, the office number is 883-5820. Uh, uh, I can't tell you that I'll uh, be able to use you because if I get too many, uh, everybody will be standing around and that priority room is not really, it's not very big. So the kids come, kids, we've got kids there, the kids come in with all their packages and everything, it gets kind of jumbled up. But uh, if you'd like to make a donation, we appreciate donations. I almost forgot that. Uh, you can drop them off the sheriff's office. You can uh, call me, and I can come pick it up. And uh, the toy drive, we have Ernie Weiler has a toy box. Uh, Bloomfield Banks, all locations have places you can drop off toys. Uh, Tractor Supply has a box. Dollar General has a box in both locations at Bloomsdale and St. Jen. Uh, I think that's it. We've got six locations, and you can always drop it off to the sheriff's office where I'll come and get a new and open toy. Then, uh, like I said, we yeah, use the toys. Yeah, unwrapped. Yes, unwrapped. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like I said, we we help anybody. If, I don't, if they don't get to go shopping, then I'll provide toy baskets for them. And what I'll do then, after the 9th, I'm sorry, December 9th at 8 o'clock. I thought I said 8th o'clock, but it's December 9th. It's on Sunday morning. But everything else is going on in town, it'll be December 9th. And what I do is we'll do the shop of the cop. When I get that all wrapped up, Sunday afternoon, come Monday morning, is when I start putting the toy baskets together. Because all next week I'm going to be super busy. So then the following week I'll do the Christmas uh, toy baskets and I'll be calling the families and say, I have a toy basket for your child, can you come pick it up? And we'll meet, I'll give you a certain time and uh, you can come pick that up. Are the uh, toy baskets now, those are for the ones that didn't make it to the Those are the ones that are under kindergarten 
and the ones that didn't get to go. Okay. Uh, the doctor family, I go down and help them with the she uh, health department. I help them and uh, make sure that's they get taken care of. So that's another program. Right now, they're, uh, as far as I know, they're full. They stopped uh, taking in. I think they took in 50 families when I talked to her the other day, and all of them had sponsors. So they was going to stop at 40, but they had some people said, so we want to adopt somebody. So they took in a few more. So that's going to be going on in the next week also, the next week or the following week. So we've got lots of stuff. Okay. Santa Claus is going to be all over town. <laughs> I think so, he is all the time. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, uh, Thanks a lot for coming. Oh, you're welcome. We do. Come back yeah. anytime. We do appreciate okay. it. Anytime. Anytime that you've got anything special you want to put out there, we'll do that. come and see us. We'll and next that. week. And I'll put out, if anybody needs something for me or the sheriff's office, uh, if you need something for a program, uh, contact me if you have me to speak and you got a special topic you need something on it and if I can't do it and if our department offers it I'll get somebody but uh, I'd be glad to <coughs> talk to your, your organization uh, speak on whatever topic you might need uh, we're there to help uh, the sheriff's office is always open uh, the sheriff is really proud of our jail uh, our facilities and our staff so if you'd ever like to uh, take a tour, if you've got a ladies organization or an organization, and you want to come and see what this is, contact the sheriff, and he'll set up a time, he'll take you for a tour in it. And uh, it's, it's an eye-opening, it's, it, it's, it's a pretty big operation. And, uh, uh, we've got a lot of good staff uh, that work there, and we hire a lot of local people. So if somebody's looking for a job and want to get into a good, stable uh, employment, then they can check that out as well. And we'd like to have them. Okay, our next show will be December the 12th. That's when we'll have the kids with music in the Christmas show. Yes. The next show will be December the 12th, and we only have one show in December. And that will be our Christmas show. And hope we have music here for you. Okay. We don't know exactly what guests we're going to have. And Santa Claus might surprise us. Uh, he always show does. Up. <laughs> he always has. And we enjoy being with you all. And it's been a wonderful year. And we thank each and every one of you for every time that you turn us on and listen to us. I know we don't do this exactly get real happy here but we try to please everybody and we hope you have an enjoyable evening and have a wonderful wonderful christmas we don't get to tell you next month we're going to tell you ahead of time have a wonderful wonderful time blow gary kiss yes blow, it, blow him a kiss go on blow a kiss out there that's you gary <laughs> thank you thank you for watching and join us again for our christmas show there we are.